question. My name is uh, Ernest Lefner. It's probably a little bit of a shock. I know many people in the audience, I know folks that are here uh, to see me on the vendor side for a change. Uh, I'm with Glueware. I'm the chief product officer. And I'm, right, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to we're going to talk about today. First, I want to do a little bit of a company update, a little overview. Then we're going to have some fun with uh, network robotic process automation. We're going to talk about no code drag and drop process automation. And Mike Howe is going to talk about that and take us through a demo. Then we're going to talk a little bit more about RPA for automated security response and external integrations with Tim Silverline, our new VP of security. Originally, Olivier was going to be joining us today, but he's unfortunately under the weather. So Mike will once again come back and talk to us a little bit about using Blueware Lab to build low-code network RPA tasks. I think we've got a theme here. So just for a second, I just want to talk a little bit about me. I know it's a, a little bit superficial, but uh, it's kind of a weird circumstance. My name, again, is Ernest Lefkoe. I'm the Chief Product Officer. Many of you know me as the co-founder and former co-chairman of ONUG. So I've seen hundreds and hundreds of folks come through the ONUG doors. I'm super excited to be a part of ONUG, or excuse me, of Glueware. And I'm also a 12-year Air Force veteran. For folks who know me, my military service means a lot to me, and I'm a big champion of veterans' causes. So why be a part of Glueware? I get this question a lot, at least three times a day. And the answer is relatively simple. When, you know, I spent a lot of time in industry trying to solve this great problem of automation. And I started just like everybody else. Hey, let's buy a tool. Let's buy a tool. What's the best tool? How do we get that tool in? How do we automate? Get some tasks done, feel good about myself, but you never really achieve that global service automation concept that you're looking for. And then I said, hey, this is great. Let's, let's build it. Let's, let's get Ansible in here. Let's look at Python. Let's build it ourselves. And after a huge length of time, we only really got 20 to 30% of what we looked for done. And so it dawned on me, like, my job isn't to automate the basic functionality of the network, right? My job is to provide business service capability on top of the network, right? Bring the agility, bring the value to the business. And while it's important to do software upgrades, it's not necessarily the core value that the business partners are looking for out of us as a part of that. So that's for foundational capability, that intellectual property. I wanted something that was new and different, that was handling the problem in a different kind of way, focusing on the data, because the data is the single most important part of the process. Next is time to value. I couldn't go back in good conscience to leadership and say I needed another three years to not deliver. So I needed some way to get value very quickly. And one of the things Blueware brings to the table is one of the fastest time to values in the marketplace. We have customers that six months after buying our product are already getting their return on investment back, right? We're able to really handle quickly and easily those tasks that keep them up at night. And then finally, I call it reliable agility. It's a couple of buzzwords I sort of stuck together there. But the point is, not only does it have to be flexible, not only does it have to meet the agility of the business, I have to be able to rely on it every single time. And if I find myself going back in, pressing buttons to try to make automation work, which is what happens when you just take tasks and try to link them all together, you really don't have anything that's reliable. And you really now, instead of worrying about the software, you worry about managing the task that's managing the software. And how does that really end up freeing you in the end? So a little bit about Glueware. I think everybody probably knows. We raised 43 million in growth funding led by Bain Capital. Big, big deal. The company's going through a stage of explosive growth. Sales team development is really on the rise. We're starting to get a tremendous amount of attention from the analysts. We've always got, you know, we've always had great press. We came out with GigaOM in the Net DevOps Radar Report as the only leader and outperformer for Net DevOps. You might say, hey, Ernest, well, what does that really mean? Well, what it means is we've brought Net DevOps principles into the product. We give you a CI CD pipeline internal or access to a private CI CD pipeline if that's your prefer, and we allow you to just do that iteration, right? Write a script, bring some automation to bear, tune it, fix it, and just keep that cycle going and promoting it throughout your network. I believe we also just last week got announced we had a Gold Stevie Award for Software Defined Infrastructure, which is fairly, fairly cool. Blueware at a glance, I won't drain the slide, but what we do, intelligent network automation, we focus on multi-vendor, multi-domain, brownfield and cloud architectures. You know, that's important because when you take a look at the landscape of orchestration, right, and we're going to be talking about RPA, which is at its heart orchestration, most of the vendors you talk to, most of the technology out there links APIs together for you in a framework, but leaves the hard part, which is actually talking to the devices, to you. Well, what value is automation and orchestration if you get, you know, this high-level connector 
right? And you get nothing underneath it. And I, and I liken this to an orchestra. You know, when you buy an orchestrator, you get the conductor. Well, you expect there to be instruments and the people to play the instruments. But if you don't build those yourselves, in many cases, you're, you're out of luck. What Glueware does is it gives you that entire orchestra, right? It gives you the, the instruments, the people, and, and the conductor. We've had some huge success uh, over the last few years. Uh, we've got some big explosive growth that's coming down the, um, the pipe. We had a little bit of a view into some of those. I want to talk a little bit about where we're, let's talk a little bit about the bottom. We talk about dashboard data. You know, we talk about device discovery, data-driven insights. The key part of this is everybody focuses on the automation. How do I get my device to do a software upgrade? How do I get the quality of service, the whole nine? What goes into making that successful is the quality and amount of data you get from the devices to be able to determine what actions are necessary. It's not about you know, scanning and grabbing stuff ad hoc. It's about getting into those devices, pulling down the configurations, looking at the routing tables, looking at the ARC tables, right? Understanding what's in your network and what that means for how you want to automate. That's what we talk about data-driven insights. It's all about peeling those nuggets of wisdom, not because you have a, you know, the smart person at the keyboard, but because the smart person at the keyboard did it in such a way that we can pull that out and maintain that for them. Some of the key activities we do, config, drift, and audit, it's a big one for us. You know, I come from a financial services background, 25 years. We can't do anything without upsetting a regulator. So making sure we understand what those configs are, how those configs change, and making sure that they adhere to our best practices, golden standards, what have you, is key. OS manager, every single customer that we talk to has a problem managing OS. There's a team dedicated to it. They're dealing with you know, vulnerabilities that are coming in all the time, and it's a constant struggle. And if you think about just the basic math for this problem, if you've got 20,000 devices in your network, how many upgrades do you have to do a day in order to meet a one software upgrade per device year policy? It's totally, it gets quickly out of hand. And then if you think about, can't do a Monday through Friday, I only have to do them on Saturdays and Sundays, then you're keeping people up on the weekends, you're really struggling to get that done. And eventually what happens to many, many customers is they fall behind. And now, instead of worried about, how the dot-com website's doing, how your e-commerce front end is doing, you're worried about how do I just get a software OS up there in time to meet my vulnerability requirements. Config modeling, it's all about automating changes. With some of our customers, one of our customers came to us and said, we automated over a, a million lines of code in a year. Think about that. That's a lot of Cisco config, no errors. So we've talked a lot about task automation. So this is where network RPA comes in. Orchestration is key. You know, I was one of the folks on stage in Onug you know, a few years ago saying, hey, network engineers, you've got to make the change. You've got to learn how to code. You've got to get on board or you're going to be left behind. I, I don't think I could have been any more wrong about anything in a long time. You've got the likes of AWS coming on board. They've got 50,000 jobs they've got to fill in the next three years. All the coders are going to go to AWS jobs. They're going to go to cloud opportunities you know so what's the reality that the entirety of our network engineering workforce is going to be able to learn to code again so the reality of the situation is we've got to bridge that gap we've got to find a way to take that great experience that each network engineer has which is prodigious right you need a tremendous amount of experience and learning to be a good network engineer today and how do we make that applicable in a no code low code way where you can bring your automation together with your knowledge to build workflows to execute config changes or software updates in the network. And more importantly, how do we have a rich, robust service of APIs that we connect to to take some of the other tasks off your plate, like opening change tickets or communicating to operations when changes need to start, whether it's an email or Slack or whether it's a JIRA ticket. And the goal really is to try to make a one-stop shop to bring the greatness of what Blueware brings together with what you need external to Blueware to make your full orchestration experience what it needs to be to be effective. So with great fanfare, at least I think so, I wanna introduce network RPA from Blueware. We talk about hyper automation. I think that's one of the next greatest things, which is about not just automating, but connecting all those dots like we just talked about. We've got pre-built automated tasks, vendor OS upgrades, and patented award-winning platform. Thank you, Stevie. So I think we're, we're well on our way. So I think that's enough of me. If uh, just a quick slide on the way out the door. If, 
you're looking for a free trial, if you're looking to take a test driver, request a demo, just go to glueware.com. We'll be able to help you out.